Hello and welcome to The Fruit Market. I'm Fiona Bradley, I'm the director, and I'm really excited to be sitting here with Carla Black um, in Carla's beautiful show. I'm very excited to be here. I'm excited that we're here, but I'm really quite sad and upset that you're not. Um, I'm very sorry about that. Um, I hope that you will enjoy the talk and that you'll be able to get a slight sense of the materiality of this extraordinary work by the fact that we are occupying the same space as it. Um, this show and the conversation about this show is really the result of a longer conversation. Um, Cara and I have been talking about art, about her art, really since before 2011 when we worked together in Venice. Um, and there was a lot of unfinished business at that point, I felt. And for the last three years, as we've been redeveloping the fruit market, we've been planning this particular show and thinking about the new fruit market building and thinking about Carla's work has been inextricably linked in my mind and in the materiality of this building, really, as we've been developing it. So it's rather over overwhelming now for me to see it. And I hope for those of you who've seen it, you feel the same way. We're going to start this evening's talk um, by showing a, a film, a walk around of the exhibition. So those of you who haven't seen the exhibition or haven't seen it for a while can have a chance to see it and experience the rhythm of it um, in a film. The film lasts for about six minutes. There is no sound. So if there, if don't worry, your sound hasn't not worked if you just, if you're silent for six minutes. Um, after we've shown the film, Carla and I are gonna have a conversation. Um, for about three quarters of an hour. Then we'll be, there'll be an opportunity for you to ask some questions. Do pop your questions in the chat. And Ruth, my colleague, is monitoring the chat and she'll ask the questions towards the end of the conversation. Um, we're also here this evening to launch the book that we're very, very proud of, um, which has some very special photographs of the exhibition in it and some beautiful texts, one by Carla herself. Um, this evening for one night and one night only, I believe there is a 10% off. Do click on the link and follow the code which we put on the chat. Um, I'm gonna stop talking in a minute and let you watch the film, but just one more thing, bear with us on the technology. We hope we're getting better at it, but if the event cuts out, if anything goes wrong, just close down the link and re-click on it and we'll let you back in and we'll start again. But for now, I'm going to leave you with the walk around film of Carla's beautiful exhibition.
So I hope you're back with us um, and I hope you enjoyed a electronic walk around of the exhibition. Carla, hello, first of hello. all, let you speak now. Um, I thought we should start off um, because we're sitting in this section of the exhibition, the, the section of the exhibition that looks really looks back over your work, that looks right back to the earlier sculpture in this room is 2006. Mm -hmm. And I've used that word sculpture, and that's where I want to start, because I know that our audience have just been in the new section of the exhibition, in the warehouse space, in our new space, and I think quite a lot of people might take issue with or have a question, is it sculpture, really, is it sculpture? Yeah, well, I think it, I think it is. Um, I'm quite adamant that it's sculpture. Um, I mean, it's not, you know, I can see that my work, that it skips up against other mediums. Mm -hmm. So it's often it's like almost installation art, almost performance. Um, almost painting probably a lot of the did, time did you study sculpture yeah 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 not that and that unusually not that everyone does but i applied to the sculpture department okay. at Glasgow school of art so that's like i'm sure about that from before i uh -huh. went there that i wanted to be in that department and that's what i wanted to do can you but, remember why um <laughs> just that i was actually making sculpture mm -hmm. so i wasn't really interested in doing anything else at that point but i think um still even now like sculpture is it's it's discipline and it's root and it's um it's limitation and it's important to me even though it does get close to to those other mediums that in the end um it has sort of defined edges mm -hmm. and each work has its own title and um it is an autonomous sculpture and it's not, I suppose, what, one of the reasons for that is that tradition is really important to me mm -hmm. in terms of art history. So it's important to me to have that discipline, I suppose, with those sort of loose raw materials that it doesn't become pure gesture and it doesn't become painting, maybe even. But um, all the sculpture has interested me so much because... I suppose in postmodernism, or say maybe like maybe in the late fifties, it's the medium that really explodes itself into all the sort of new experimental works, you know, mm -hmm. so and forms. So you get land art, video art, sound art, performance art, happenings, environments, installations, and you get all of that out, out of sculpture. So you talk as, about it as, as a medium of sort right. of mass and so space although it's and discipline, time. it kind of allowed itself to break free of that maybe or yeah, and then I suppose for me, um because I'm so obsessed by aesthetics as mm -hmm. well. So I feel like I love all that experimentation and all that development and progression, you know, and trying to sort of um yeah, make something new. Mm -hmm. and, but because I'm so obsessed by the formal and by aesthetics and by the relationship of like colour to material to composition, which is a really sort of modernist mm -hmm. way of making work, I suppose what I've tried to do, I feel like what gets lost a bit in postmodernism and all the sort of exciting experimentation sometimes is aesthetics. And, the, and, and, by, I, and I care for that, so I try to like pull it back, take all that sort of uh, raw material and all that sort of um, experimentation and pull it back towards the modernist autonomous object, the painting or the, or the sculpture on the plinth and try to have that um, those careful aesthetics within it. So by aesthetics you mean what it look literally what it looked a pleasing form is that a form well, you've got in your head before you start no and i don't I, I don't think that's what aesthetics are like it's yeah no it's not a pleasing what are aesthetics form for you? it's it's the it's the relationship of color to material mm -hmm. to composition and then to form but it's not necessarily pleasing mm -hmm. um, or harmonious maybe is what you mean I don't know yeah 
um, in a traditional, I suppose you yeah. So you mentioned performance art, and yeah. there is a sense, I think there have been times in your works earlier on maybe skirted up against performance, but now you they're out there in the world aren't they your sculptures they don't yeah. need, they don't need you you don't perform them no for no, us. no and it was never a performance that I suppose it was always like if it, this is really if we're going back that far we're talking about art school really mm -hmm. and so that would be like nine, 1999 mm -hmm. and before and um so that I would sort of see maybe what I was doing then was like actions with materials uh -huh. or something. So I was using these sort of raw, loose materials and I knew that they were the work mm -hmm. or something, but I didn't know how to separate myself from that. Yeah, so I didn't know how I could um, have the show like potential and life and energy have that remain within those materials and um, have some sort of formal aesthetics within within them without, you know, at that point me still touching them mm -hmm. or working with them. And then it took me a bit of time. At that point, I'd realise, oh, people aren't, yeah, if it's me working with materials, they're looking at me, you know, me and the work on me with the work, and it's not got anything to do with me and I need to remove myself from it and then at a certain point probably um maybe in the year 2000 I would say like is the first exhibition where I worked out how to do that mm -hmm. yeah and that is I love that use of like working out how to do something there is a there's an experimentation sort of attached to your sculptures maybe they're they are sculptures but they they seem to experiment with themselves or you experiment with how far you can push them yeah well I suppose it's just about that the um what are the sort of limitations of the physical world, even just sort of fundamentally, like gravity, like how can something stand up or not, or how does it, or how do you, um, how does a material sort of hover at the eyes or whatever, or a colour, if that's what you want it to do. Mm -hmm. There's traditional methods of, of doing that, which are just a painting in a frame or a sculpture on a plinth, and I suppose. I was trying to, because for me, like, it's like the... I don't want to say it's not like the material is the most important thing. That's not that's not true, really. But as a way to try to explain it, I suppose I think that um, like sculpture is at its best or interests me the most when it holds within it the truth that the object, any object, is a fallacy. You know, so in the material world, material is only ever sort of flying together or flying apart, we know that, but it's just our um, little sort of limited human perception of time that makes us ever think that anything is an object, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, or it's solid or unchanging, so I suppose I was always and I'm still trying to get that truth in in the work that sort of um and yeah also just thinking about sculpture and what like what the word means or something mm -hmm. as well it's like i think like the latin sort of root of it it means to carve mm -hmm. but then there's a more ancient sort of root to the word that just means cut or to cut so it's a taking so. away, that's interesting. Well, yeah, I'm not sure I think of your work necessarily as a carving. Maybe or... not, but it would that could also be in terms of like you could gain from that because mm -hmm. it could be to gain possession of it mm -hmm. from the world, you mm -hmm. know, to extract it or something like that from the earth. Like, so who knows really what the word means, you know, but I think like now it would just be in the dictionary definition would just be to yeah to carve or shape something in wood or stone or you have some like it was some sort of plastic expression of mm -hmm. a three-dimensional object yeah. <laughs> but I suppose what I'm trying to do is um that's why it's really important to me to call it sculpture mm -hmm. and not like especially with the looser powder works and things not ever to say that it's an installation and just be yeah, because most people would think the work we have upstairs, excuse me, I'm yeah. gesturing up there, it's literally up there, is an installation. It's a it's a carpet of pink powder 
over yeah. the floor. It's installed, clearly you've installed it. But, but I still think it's really important to say that that's a sculpture and not to just, okay, it's a more ancient word or whatever, mm -hmm. it still doesn't really help. Yeah. Um, but at least it's not the word installation, which just pops up in the 1960s or 70s because someone can't think of a word for something that isn't holding itself together. Mm -hmm. But it's still sculpture, even though it might not the material. It is holding itself together. It's hard to say, but also it's not holding itself together in what looks to you to be in this little moment in time a solid object, you know? Mm -hmm. And they don't, they are holding, it is holding itself together, they do hold themselves together. Yeah, and as, they, a, as a work. As a work, it, and, yeah. yeah. And yeah. for itself, they are, mm -hmm. they don't seem to me to signpost outside themselves particularly, they are abstract forms. Although there again, I've just used the yeah. word carpet, so maybe they're not abstract forms, but they are, yeah. they seem to me to want to speak of abstraction really. To, mm -hmm. I know that you've thought a lot and have written a lot and talked a lot about abstraction and I'm, I would, yeah. I'd love to ask you to talk with reference to this show and your work. Yeah, um, well, as just the same as saying that there's sort of so definitely sculpture, it's another one of those things that's really important to me is that the work is abstract mm -hmm. and there's, there's many reasons for that or um, it has many roots or something like that. But one of them is um, just that it's not, you know, um, the difference between sort of sculpture and, and painting, I suppose, maybe is how it is the beginning of trying to explain that, just in terms of like a sort of physical reality. And for me, something like language, that's abstract. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a made up little code and it's completely abstract, mm -hmm. whereas you know, pink powder on the floor is just completely real, not abstract at all, I don't think. But in terms of like art or something or the history of art, it's like I think, well, um, it's not just my work isn't just pictorially abstract, which would be traditional abstraction is painterly abstraction, I suppose. So, so not figurative, not all Yeah, it would be like it hasn't, it hasn't worked itself up into a figure or a landscape or a still life or something mm -hmm. that you recognise. But I think my work, I, I say it's materially abstract because it hasn't worked itself up into a sort of structure or permanence or um, a solid form or something. So I think it's materially abstract. I think that's important. It's quite like... <laughs> is the earth <laughs> is dirt materially abstract? You know what I mean? Is it I, or or is it um into um I don't know. Yeah, or it's just like reality. But mm. then um in terms of sort of art and art history, I think that you know traditionally that um a traditional painting is a sort of escape from from where you are in the yeah. in the sort of physical material world you know sort of providing as it does a kind of window onto another world so you look at that or through that and you are somewhere else mm -hmm. whereas i think with sculpture what it can do um is just really root you in the place that you are mm -hmm. and, and it can be um you know sort of absorbing and engulfing you know just mm -hmm. in terms of like physical material and it kind of puts you in your body and in the world but it's not in such a way I think that can sort of be more of an escape mm -hmm. than that sort of traditional window onto another world thing that's a cerebral optical thing and this sculpture is sort of of the, of the body. We've, um, we've had some really yeah. nice observations here from visitors and from people who've talked to our information assistants and made observations about how they feel in their bodies moving around particularly this space because yeah. the sculptures are quite close together and you have to you engage in a relationship with them by by not bumping into them basically yeah, yeah. And moving around them and how they make you feel and quite an interest were you right. thinking about that in installing this did you because they are quite densely they do take up a very physical relationship with each other and with you were you thinking about how people would move around it yeah, I mean, uh, intentionally in this space, is that there's too much 
work in it and that's mm-hmm. intentional and then um, you know in some ways that and, and it's quite sort of um how would you describe it I don't want to say those words like delicate or fragile or something but just that um you shouldn't touch it and it's yeah. you know changeable or whatever <laughs> um or easy to damage I would say like easy to damage easy to repair sort of yeah. my work but I do the same it's similar to what I do with the powder floor works when I push them like almost right to the edge of the room mm-hmm. and just leave a little sort of gap around the edge to walk around always what I'm trying to do with that is um it, it it's like a it's not exactly a prov well it's sort of as a provocation or a confrontation and it's kind of like you know, I always say about my work, so no barriers, no plinths. Um, and <clears throat> it's to say this material, this stuff that just looks like rubbish that you could crumple it up and put it in the bin, you know, a crumpled piece of paper. Um, and to try to make it sort of so attractive <laughs> or, mm. or like to imbue the materials with such um profundity or something like that that people wouldn't want to to damage it but I mean they may and they do and I think the thing is like though but to give it's quite a difficult um I think that sort of brings up a lot of um feelings you know and a lot of sort of I always say like I tried to create at least a sort of impetus towards physical response mm-hmm. and the person who's looking at it. so it's like that and it's your responsibility you know and it's your well, to, responsibility to if you st- is it good do you think it's good or or is it worth anything mm-hmm. that you wouldn't step in it or you wouldn't um try to change it or would you or what you know and those sort of challenges and then how you feel I think like the way that um sort of I don't know addresses behavior Mm -hmm. or in some way well how it Um, wants you to behave in relation to it yeah and it's not really like it doesn't want you to behave in any way but I suppose it is like that thing of like trying to yeah, it's got something, of, so there's something about behavioural responsibility, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fact, the thing is that I, I mean, obviously living with it for a long time and watching people respond to it, my, my feelings about it are changing over time, which is exactly what you want from an exhibition. But in terms of this, what you're talking about, material abstraction, which is really interesting and abstraction generally, is there room for, is there room for meaning in there? Is there, where does meaning because quite often people, you know, what does it mean? Yeah. Are you interested in that? I mean, I'm interested in it because it's just like the ridiculousness of um, what does that mean? You know, so it's like where where is the site of meaning? If the, mm-hmm. if the site of meaning is like in language or something, then no. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean, it's a really difficult thing to talk about it because of course it doesn't not mean anything. Mm-hmm. It's like, I do... <laughs> feel like I sort of need to address this yeah. somehow I do want to talk about it because I feel like the way I've been talking about it or the way it has been understood or something mm-hmm. up to now is only seems to lead some people to think that it doesn't mean anything yeah. but it's just that <laughs> that's not it, it just exists so much outside of language you know it's like so it doesn't another reason why it's abstract and so materially abstract is that it doesn't um point outside of itself to meaning so there's no not traditionally in the you know in like there's no narrative or something that there's no it doesn't point outside of itself to through metaphor or symbol or narrative to to a meaning in language that's out, outside of itself it's just um but that's not odd to me but I can sort of it's just that we're so steeped in language like mm-hmm. in our culture I think in our sort of western culture that um I suppose maybe I don't know maybe some people find that difficult but I, I think before 
you know, as sort of human beings before we have words or no words, like we know we have a physical relationship mm -hmm. to the material world and we know colour and form and um, it's like, it's hard to talk, that these things are just really difficult to talk about and that language is a really sort of inadequate and primitive tool. And you've said, um, I think you said once to me that why is it, why don't we ask what landscape means? Why can we walk through wood and yeah, not ask a tree I mean, what I, it means? Yeah. Why can we sit with that? And as I said before, I sort of feel like the way I was talking about the difference between a uh, paint, like a traditional painting and sculpture or something, and what that can do for you. Um, in some ways, that's like the difference between something like with sculpture, like meaning and, and consequences. So sometimes I say, rather than ask, you know, what does it mean? It's like, we would ask, what, what are the consequences of this work? And I think it does have consequences like in the sort of real material, physical world. And one of the things I'm trying to do with the work is really sort of keep introducing and reintroducing the, the raw creative moment, like into the institution and into the market and the gallery. And it's like, um, you know, because people think that they want art and institutions think that they want art, but they don't really, not really, because it's like, you know, it's a really sort of difficult, messy, chaotic business, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think there's that. It has those consequences because it is at least succeeding in part um, in forcing those things into the institution and the gallery and the market. No, it just gets increasingly difficult all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but does it have to be in the institution and the market? Yes. They, do they gain meaning or consequences by being in the institution? Would they be as, would you be as happy with them if they didn't um, have a life in, in the context of an, of an art gallery, say? Um, no, because it is art and it's not, and I don't even want it to be outside or I want it to be in the gallery and it has, it's just really connected to art history mm. and that's really important. I also think because um, if it was outside, like you could lose the, it's not, yeah, you could lose the context for it, but it's not really that, it's more that, because as well as um, it having the sort of consequences of forcing those, those things into this, institution or whatever or just a building whatever mm -hmm. it's it's also about behavior human behavior and the, and the sort of continuance of, of that sort of humanity i think because it's like yeah because it's sort of like the world's been taken away from us or like them to, and then it gets given back to you in little pieces and it usually gets given back to you in little pieces that you have to pay for you know but in this situation you sort of feel like yeah, art, this category, whatever it is, within culture, within sort of Western culture, this little sort of fenced off area where you're given permission to behave like the animal we are, you know? And it's like, but yeah, of course, it's really important that that exists, but then I think it's it's really important to talk about what it is mm -hmm. and why, why does it only exist here? Mm -hmm. You know, for example, like if I, some of the, behaviors that are involved in like making the earthworks or the powder works I was like a lot of my work is sort of scrabbling around in the dark or scrabbling around on the floor you think in here that's fine and acceptable but if you were to do that outside it's a whole different response and 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 also it's actually not allowed and and it's not so supposed to be allowed in the art gallery either well they would go there <laughs> I would think it's supposed to be. Yes, it is supposed to be right. But, um, and then even, not just for me, I mean, that's sort of talking about me making work or what the work then is, but but I think for people just looking at it and experiencing it as well, mm -hmm. sort of think about that a bit like a person alone in, in a landscape, you know, mm -hmm. and, and how often it's like, and who are the gatekeepers and how often... Are you allowed to look at a raw material on the on the floor or something? And who, and even for like young people coming out of art school, and it's like because the art. I mean, now with like the pandemic, who knows? But it does seem like the commercial art world's just got back into gear, you know? Yes. 
Art Basel's happening, I don't know, but it's like the art fairs king, the commercial gallery. How do you get a person coming out of art school now just making the work that they should make Mm -hmm. as a person? And it's like, and you know, when really what's being demanded is this like sort of hermetically sealed, transferable object for what, you know? Um, So is it part of your mission really to make work that does claim a space for that, a space for a sort of yeah. different view of the world that isn't. It's not, and, and also, it's not a different view of the world. Like I, I sort of think like it's, it's just. Um, but there's the problem of we're already thinking about it like that. Then it means it's been taken away from us, and now it's something weird. Mm-hmm. It's like, is it? Um, and who's allowed? So, so I'm allowed to. Like sort of scabble about on the floor, maybe, but but you know, no one, mm. not no one else is. But I mean, what about someone who's not an artist or mm. like, how come? Um, that's some sort of strange behaviour. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand that. But yeah, um, let's talk about colour. I want to talk about colour. <laughs> Can we talk about colour? Is that all right? Yeah, I mean, I suppose I think of colour probably also as a material um and I would say like a lot because colour doesn't does colour colour doesn't is colour a material is it a thing Um, is it an object is it well it's like it's like it's like a um well if you think of of colour as light Mm um yeah sort of colour doesn't exist so it doesn't exist there's no colour in the dark (laughs) but I think this the spectrum is um it's they're just it's just different frequencies and wavelengths of light mm-hmm. um but i suppose the way i use color is when i speak about how the sculptures are almost objects or only just objects or so you know that's what i sort of think but i try to use color in that way as well so it's like you know there's never like bright primary colors in mm-hmm. in the work or something you wouldn't see red really mm-hmm. or um but I suppose I'm trying a lot of the time to get as close to white as I can. Oh, yeah. Something well, I try to say it's like so it's just almost a colour or only just a colour. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes like the work is trying to be there's a whole thing about it sort of almost being nothing really. And then that thing that I think about a lot about how like when it has to be made into an object or something or a colour, like that that's a loss. Uh-huh. Um and you know, I wrote that essay a long time ago in that catalogue for, I had like a few exhibitions together in 2009, and uh, the essay in the catalogue is called It's Proof That Counts, and that was like a whole sort of, um, some sort of attempt to communicate the idea, um, an idea about how, <laughs> like partly the make, the making of, a, of an artwork or of anything, like in some ways it's only to provide our culture or society with some sort of proof so that you then get permission for the behaviour to continue. Uh So it's sort of like a lot of it, yeah, sort of feels like a loss, I think. Mm -hmm. I I mean, I sort of remember before I even went to art school that I had a studio and I used to go to the weekends or whatever, I'm making really bad sort of terracotta figurative sculptures. And then, um, yeah, one day I was just sort of sitting, scraping some clay off the desk with the end of a Stanley knife, you know? And, and, I'd, and I just thought, oh, this, well, this is enough. This is enough. But the little like, scrapings or the gesture yeah, of scraping? Well, 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 I don't even know how, I, how much I could really sort of go into that and explain it. Um, I suppose for me, this is enough. So perhaps it's the behaviour or it's the mm-hmm. contact, mm-hmm. just some contact behaviour with the material world and a continuance of that. But I'm well aware that, that you know, that's like if this work was just purely pure material gesture, it's really self-indulgent. And so that's not what I was going to do. But I, but I still see um, taking it further than that as yeah just some necessity to make like proof mm-hmm. of something 
And it's true that if you, you know, you need other people like in society to accept that proof of worth mm -hmm. or something that, to then say to you that you're allowed, you're allowed to continue, you know. Which probably and begins that, us, uh, which leads us to the book and to this exhibition and to the question about whether it's a retrospective or not. Oh, yeah. The book is called, and the show is called, Sculptures 2001 to 2021, Details for a Retrospective. Yeah. And I didn't force that title on you. So there is oh, a- no, I, let's, I made that up. Let's yeah. talk about the notion of a retrospective, if you will. Um, yes, I wanted to, I like to, you know, the tropes and sort of categories of, of art history are really important to me. And um, in terms of like talking about that, even just permission to continue making the work, there's mm. there's that other thing as well that's like the canon, yeah. um, which which then gives the work life mm -hmm. um, into the future. So then it's not just there's something that you have to do that um, sort of proves the worth of the art making behaviour in the society that gives you the permission to keep going with and that. Because you're doing but, it for the future, yes. No, well, works. then that, yeah. that bit that I'm talking about it, in terms of like the art making behaviour is just like now in time, that's like sort of, that's, you know, in my life or whatever, or in whatever. But, um, the canon <laughs> or whatever that is, the monographs, the museum show, the retrospective, the mid career survey show, like or whatever, they're the things that allow the work to enter the canon, the mm -hmm. art historical canon. And then the canon is the thing that gives the work permission to live so on into the future. Some kind of cycle. Or and as we know, those things are really sort of dominated by men and by white men. In, in terms of Western um, art history. So I would play around with those those things like the retrospect of the monographs, the, you know, the mm -hmm. mid-career stuff you show, like to, because, um, and it's like that thing also, do I give, I give myself permission mm -hmm. to have a pretend retrospective? And, uh, but I'm quite into that, you know, a lot of the time I sort of think of the works as pretend, as being sort of pretend sculpture. And, and so I would, play around with all that stuff because you can't be because it is made up yes. you know I'm not it, it's like saying if the object's a fallacy <laughs> and there's no such thing as a solid object there's certainly no such thing as a you know as like art history or um or a retrospective, a retrospective. <laughs> I mean who gets to decide yeah. anyway I mean it is it's uh, it certainly is retrospective it's looking back yeah whether it's a retrospect whether this is a catalogue raisonné I would say yeah I mean one of those things are retrospective... things that you would ever want yeah. to be involved in and validate anyway as yes. one thing like as a feminist or you know but then the other thing is well, well I give myself permission so if I decide that it's kind of a retrospective then it is mm -hmm. and then it's also yeah, I suppose so. There's a lot of things within the work that I like. I have sort of feminist stance, and one of them is just to always call every exhibition just my name, mm -hmm. and the, it doesn't have a title because it's like, yeah. So that's the important thing. It's like just you know me in a room with materials, but also just not to even sort of dilute that permission that I give myself at all, you know, and uh, if I decide <laughs> I want to sort of take up space having a retrospective or a monograph and I try to just like make it happen myself, not that I'm saying like I don't have museum shows or other monographs because I do. But, working with you is um, one of the most exciting things a curator is ever going to get to do because <laughs> everything is done for a reason everything is questioned this book is your as much as it is it it's a book of this show it's your vision it's your photograph it's the way you see your work it's up very very close yeah. there's a I think you do interrogate what everything can do for the world and for the sculpture and, and that extends to the kind of the the markers you want in the world for the for the work the fact that there is a book yeah thank, I, mean, I mean I suppose it's like um 
yeah, I can't have someone else design a, a book or a rose. Like, really painful to me to think that someone else would make the poster or mm. design the book or even take... I mean, photographs of sculpture, oh, that's like a really problematic for me. I've always hated it and it's worse now than ever, mm -hmm. you know, because of, like, the internet and social media. But I hate photographs of sculpture. I hate photographs of my own sculpture. I'd just rather they didn't exist at all. So, and, and a lot of that... I mean, there's a lot of that in the work of, like, you're trying to just, like make compromises or like solve mm -hmm. find a solution to these problems that are just really um yeah maybe i don't want to talk about my work i don't want to make a catalog mm -hmm. you know but yeah but, but i will yeah. i will because um because it's just important to sort of address it and engage with it as to as to why that's required or something when I would never really listen to an arts talk or, you know, not that I don't, I don't mean that, that sounds terribly like really arrogant. I, I don't want to listen to myself talk or talk. I, I just want to look at the work, always, always, you know, be with the work and look at the work, but I'm not interested in anything beyond that, you know. We're going to move to questions in a minute, but I think that's a great place to pause because, of course, of all these accoutrements, the artist talk, the book, the poster, the fact that this is our first show, what it does is it slows people down with the work. It gives people the opportunity to spend time, exactly as you just said, with the work, which is a nice thing to be able to do. I'm imagining, I'm hoping there are some mm -hmm. questions from our audience. Uh, my colleague Ruth, and we're not, we haven't got the technology that you can speak your own questions, I'm very sorry, but Ruth has been looking at the questions on the chat and she's going to pose questions to Carla for a few minutes. Ruth, over to you. So I've been collecting them from the chat, so uh, they won't necessarily be in the order they appeared, but that's okay. Um, we've got one um, that this is, I was wondering at what point Carla considers a sculpture successful or finished. Oh yeah. Um, I suppose that's quite interesting because I always I'll tell you the truth about that and it is that um, I always think to myself if this was a painting would it be a good painting and if I can say yes then it's then it's finished because I suppose like the process even though like there's sculptures in the end the process is really painterly um, but also so that's the flippant answer, I guess, so, but it's something I think about. The other one would be just so much more complex and sort of difficult to discuss about um, how do you know that an abstract work is good? Mm -hmm. or if it's, so it's finished when it's good, right? That's all, but it, it just needs to, but how do I or anybody else well, presumably know you. that? Or you well, it doesn't be, and I'm not saying it's necessarily good as long as I think that whatever that is that I'm trying to put on it but I yeah the root of I suppose I've only ever heard I, I, that's just something that I sort of feel like I know and everyone is absolutely entitled to say yeah disagree um I feel like I know what a good abstract piece of work is it's often like what you you want to see like an agile mind at work you know and then when I not talking about my own work other people's work when I see that I love that and, and that's really good I've only ever and I've talked about it with other people and other artists like you can't there's no real way to sort of explain when or why a sort of piece of abstract art is good but I guess in my work the sort of theoretical root of the work is is psychoanalytic and I would, I've only ever I mean, in terms of like, it's like, it's sort of behavior or something. And then you think, you think, what have you done? And then it's after that, it becomes sort of named. At the point and you're talking you talking to you done. then, what have you done? Are you talking to the Yeah, work? no, but I think, oh, well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about the bit, probably, probably talking about the behavior, maybe, mm -hmm. probably. Um, but then it doesn't, it's, the behavior is not separate from the material because it's behavior, it's with materials. So you can't really separate it out. It becomes like, but um yeah like hannah Segal wrote this book called dream fantasy and art and that's the only time i've ever really heard it sort of explained really well as she says that like especially but maybe this is like any work of art but especially abstract art you can tell 
people instinctively know because what you instinctively what you see and recognize is a person or a behavior a person with behavior that sort of shows to you that they've been able to that they've successfully in their development been able to sort of go through the mourning process and come out of it intact so it means that you can you can destroy something mm-hmm. and you can recreate it and that that when that's good and that your internal structures were going through that are good and I haven't been interfered with in any way you've managed to sort of successfully get that through that phase of your development that you can see that mm-hmm. apparently in work that you make but I don't know that's the only time I've ever sort of nice. heard some yeah. explanation do you like that. sorry we'll go to other questions but do you like seeing them again do you like seeing the mm-hmm. work that from the past oh yeah yeah mm-hmm. there is a question about that that's okay. just come in that says when the works arrive for the pieces in this room alone I'm interested how they feel to be rehung and seen together for the first time yeah well I mean I, I suppose because like I would only ever this is only something I started to do in this show and one previous show that's all the first time I showed older works together was in the Des Moines and Des Moines Arts Centre and I had a social day and was it in 2018, just before? No, it was February 2020. 2020. 2020. Oh my God, like, sorry. It was the like, month I don't know, it the was pandemic. the pandemic. It feels like that <laughs> long ago, like it's been going on for so long. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that can be quite difficult. It's like, um, it's good to see them and I like to see them all it, like individually and I'd be quite surprised sometimes about how fresh they still look or how they look like they have just been made which and maybe I would have expected a bit more um deterioration in them but um I feel like maybe these will be the only times that I will put older works together I don't know if I'll do it again or if I do if it maybe won't be for a long time because it's not yeah this it's just something else and then the idea of this sort of these sort of details for a retrospective or or, or something that's kind of like a little sort of glimpse of the future life of the work of what that might be when I'm not there anymore but usually yeah I make new work every time every show so I don't it can be it can be difficult to see them together as well and to think um how would you yeah and and then I think when I do I would do I tend to do this thing where I sort of crowd them and I don't um think too much because maybe because it's already wrong or something like that and then I want it to be wrong you for that to be obvious like there's too them, much there's just yeah. too much and they're too close together and so that's what I'll what I'll do in that in that circumstance but I don't know if that answers the yeah. question really. I think so. there's a, another question about site specificity and whether mm-hmm. that's something that interests you or whether you know whether you think about that term and the difference between works you make in situ and then pieces that you make in a different space yeah I do uh, it's really important to me and but it's more like um yeah that would be the thing that I would always want to do really is to make work in the place where it's going to be seen and um but it would be you know how some people you know obviously all arts work in different ways and you would have arts who would be responding to just something else about the, the space or the place like they would be researching like the history of it or what or the use the former use <clears throat> things that seem more narrative or historical whereas I am it's just like pure physical realities but I love to deal with that but it would just be stuff like where's the door what color is the floor can I put something directly on it where are the windows what you know but I love to it's really that's really physical and sort of compositional but I love to work like that so it's not interesting to you that the warehouse next door was a form of fruit or vegetable no, warehouse but no. what it how it feels and how it is is interesting yeah. to you yeah yeah mm-hmm. and you can see that it is with the work that you've made because the work that you've made seems to belong there yeah well I mean yeah I hope so and it should like hopefully any work that yeah I would make in a space should it should belong there and ultimately 
you know, my sort of pipe dream <laughs> really for my work, like ultimately is I really want to have a building that's probably a domestic house or something in Glasgow and make work in it that's, that n- never moves. You know, sort of inspired by something like Walter Demaria's Earth Room mm. in New York, but Ian Hamilton Finley's Garden, and thinking about those kind of things. But that's what I really, really want to do in the future. And I sort of don't care about anything else, you know, because it's so compromised. Everything else is so compromised that I feel like I would want to at some point do that. And also just to show that it is the way it should be and it is possible that you could just leave a powder floor work there forever. Mm. Oh God, I really want you to or do it too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's too let's cool. do that. Let's do that. Yeah. Next. <laughs> There's a question about sculpture in the warehouse, um, which is what's the relationship between soil, gold, and shapes to you? Um, soil and gold and shapes. Gold, soil and gold and shapes. Shapes. And does it lead us to some kind of metaphor? I know what you're going to say. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, just say no. Anyway, it doesn't lead us to. But it can. I mean, it's not up to me you know where it leads anyone I'm not saying that that would be like sort of fascistic or something I'm not interested in controlling people's response to the work and of course people think in connotations and metaphor of course that's absolutely fine it's just that I'm not thinking like that you know and it's not my intention or it's not what I'm getting out of the work but but I don't think it matters it doesn't matter to um so I haven't thought of any metaphors, uh, but um, the title of, of the work is, um, well, and then I'll say that and I'll contradict myself because like oh, there's big sort of contradictions within the work, especially to do with the, the titles. Mm-hmm. But so I've tried to see what's the relationship to gold and earth and shapes. I think, um, so it's like that thing of like, what what's material and what's an object then, or it's just like, and then you have this material and what are you going to work it up into and how how much are you going to sort of work it up and sometimes just what differentiates one artist's work from another not completely but you know in a way is like just where they stop in the process so the difference between you know yeah sort of material gestural performance art and like photo realist painting is just not really that much it's just a where you stop in the, so you, in the in process, the like you, everyone... Yeah. You stop just as the soil comes out so, of the bag. Yeah, know. well, it would be like, are we trying to... Um, the the gold leaf's really interesting because, it, because of its flatness and its thinness, like it's so thin. But, the, but then the way you have to work with it, if you want it to stay like that, or you want it to sort of crumple it to a certain degree, or you want it to, to move around the floor, or you want it to stick it to the wall, um you have to sort of work with it in a really specific way and then the same thing with the earth it's like that thing that I was talking about before about material just either sort of flying together or flying apart it's like they're they're yeah they're sort of really similar things in terms of how much they might crumble and and, and when and how much you can get out of them in, in terms of like form but then to talk about the title then like because it's called waver for shade and for ages i was couldn't decide whether it should be the word waver that just has an e in it what's the word waver with an ai yeah and i'm still not sure what whether <laughs> so it, it is waver for shade with an ai and then the and so that means yeah like it's not wavering <laughs> Yeah, waver. so but wa- waver for shade if it just had an A would mean you would wait, you would you could hesitate. Yeah. yeah. Or you could wait a while in it or wait a while for it or hesitate. So it's not like but then the waver with the with the AI is that is that it is dismissed. But I would hope even just the inherent here in the word that you have both of those things and it's like um the whole thing is really important to me in terms of when I was talking about sort of sculpture as an absorption and why it has that title is because it's also quite a sort of feminist work I think as well there's this, like those ideas about absorption because it's sort of like there's no figure there's, there's no phase and um 
when you're not it's like when you're absorbed in the, the physical world and of course everyone knows this everyone has this experience where um and you're not aware of yourself or what you look like or that anyone's looking at you or you know you're just fully absorbed in what you're doing in this sort of material reality of the world of the world and then as soon as you become aware of someone looking at you or your own face or your own face like it, it just snaps you out of that really quickly it's like a sort of and and you're you're back in that place of self-consciousness rather than self-absorption this is just so much more freedom in um that self-absorption i think that um that's what i'm trying to do with this real sort of loose role material sculptures to give back that sort of real experience to people of what you know there's lots of work to have like the, the mirror and the painting over the mirror but it's like before the mirror or before photography you know there's, there was always going to possibly be the chance of someone looking at you but um the way we were for shade is like that it's also got loads of stuff to do with makeup mm -hmm. There's a lot of sort of foundation in it, and that does relate to those ideas. So, yeah. So there is, if you want to, because I obviously contradict myself all the time, and I like that, and I think it's important in working. It's like, of course, if you want to think about those things and go down that route, it's all it's all there, you know. But it's kind of yeah happens quite a lot in the title that is quite separate and secondary to the work in a way. Um, That's lovely. We should probably stop, I think, which I can't quite bear to, especially now you've <laughs> sketched out the possibility of a future for the work and for you and for Glasgow, which is really quite extraordinary that I really want to see happen. But thank you, Carla. I think it is, I know the work is the work and talking about the work is a different kind of thing. And I know I said this to you before, you don't like language, but language really loves you. You talk beautifully about the work <laughs> and it's been a huge honor for us to have that here as well as this work here, to have your words here. So thank you for both thank of you. those things. Thank you, yeah. And thank you to you for joining us and um, come back and see the show if you can. It's on till the 24th of October, and then I can't quite bear it that it is actually going away, um, but it will have another incarnation. But for the time it's flying together here, let's hope lots more people will come and see it. But thank you very, very much. Thank you.